What's up, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer from blueandgold.com with our resident football coach, Tim Hyde. And we're talking about Notre Dame's 2022 recruiting class. Wanted to have Tim on to um, give his thoughts and some superlatives, if you will, on the Fighting Irish 2022 class. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. Like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Go to blueandgold.com for your home for Notre Dame Fighting Irish football recruiting coverage. All right, Tim, let's start with kind of your top overall recruit in the 2022 class. Notre Dame signed 21 players in December. And as we record this, of course, Notre Dame can still potentially add, you know, grad transfer to maybe another high school recruit. Obviously, the receiver position we're keeping an eye on. We'll, we'll dive into receiver recruiting later. But your top overall recruit in this class is? Well, I mean, real quick, when you go over top overall recruit, is it the best player? Who's this? Who's that? The highest ranked? I looked at it as the highest ranked player, and I think that was a no-brainer. And, and you know, and Jalen Sneed right there, he is dynamic, outstanding, outstanding athlete. I mean, you can't say enough about this guy. He is, you know, a combination of all the, you know, the three Buckus Award winners Notre Dame's had during the Brian Kelly era. Uh, he could cover, he could run, he could hit outstanding all around skills. And then and more importantly, when you look at him is, you know, you know, kind of the, the Marcus Freeman factor, which is real when you look at recruiting with some of the positions and some of the areas that they're getting guys at. And obviously, you know, you've talked all about it. His, you know, Marcus Freeman's really good friends with his high school coach. Jalen, you know, Sneed would not be coming here without that relationship, which is huge. But also the impact of this young man is in the rivals era, I use the rivals rankings of, you know, top 100 linebackers. And Hunter Dame's only recruited five of them since 2002. You got Jalen Smith, Manti Teo, uh, Dalen, you know, Dalen Hayes, who's more of a drop end DN type guy, but he was a five star. Uh, then you have Niles Morgan, who was a great football player uh, for Notre Dame. And then, uh, you know, the, one of the hidden ones, you know, due to injuries that didn't perform was Jack Lamb. So that's it. So when you talk about impact, MVP, the best player in this class, it's got to be him just because of the, you know, his recruiting prowess. And Notre Dame does not get linebackers like this young man during their, uh, you know, over the last basically 20 years. Yeah. Tim, I, I can appreciate you kind of going from a ranking standpoint, but from just a talent standpoint, when you're watching the film, I know your answer is Jalen Seed as well. So what, what what's your kind of scouting report do you like him more at rover or will um kind of break it break him down for us uh flip a coin uh, yeah. let marcus freeman let marcus freeman figure it out and that you know that's you know when you watch his film that's the way i look at it um i watched your you know awesome videos with mike goolsby the other day and i know he was talking about him playing depth which is interesting i have a linebacker playing division one i coach we played him at seven yards all the time and let him react and just chase the ball down and he was a big time football player uh, that went division one. The, the awesome thing about him is he's a two-way guy. I mean, he's getting the football at quarterback and running like over people, which is outstanding. He's physical. He's fast. He's got an unbelievable strike with his pad level and the way he just is so physical with his hands and shoulders, like that, that shot right there. I mean, he is literally a combination of, you know, a Wusu Koromo and, and Jalen Smith, which is that's your Rover. That's your will linebacker. You know, what's his size going to be? Is he going to get up to 230 to play inside? Or do you just be like, hey, let this guy be who he is. Let him play at 220 and just play the wide side of the field, which is basically what Ousu Koromoa did, and uh, and run from there. He is – he is ever, I mean, he's an SEC linebacker. You can't say that enough when you watch his film. Now, moving to a next topic, top overall position group in this – in this class, it's got to be linebacker or offensive line, right? I mean, w w where are you yes. leaning? I went with linebacker uh, just because of the athleticism all four of those guys bring. The offensive line is outstanding. You got four guys in the top 200. You know, the linebackers signed four, three out of those four are in the top 200, which, uh, you know, which, by the way, has only happened one time, which was the class with, you know, Bo Bauer. A couple of years ago, and Bo Bauer, Jack Lamb, you know, when they had three in the top uh, 200. So it's athleticism. You watch their film, you got guys playing on offense. I mean, jo you know, Josh Burnham, go play Wildcat quarterback for Notre Dame. Ziegler, you know, catches for over a thousand yards. It, it, it would pop it on, pop it on Nolan Ziegler's tape yeah. here. 
oh, you watch him play and you're like, okay, <laughs> go, go play wide receiver for us. You know, uh, athleticism in all four of these guys. Sneed brings it at all levels, can play multiple positions. Ziegler is going to be one of those, you know, hybrid type guys. You know, is he going to get bigger into a J.D. Bertrand thickness? Is he going to stay an outside backer like Kaiser is? He's a combination of those guys, I feel, when you watch him. And just his athleticism right there when you get the ball. Burnham is probably, you know, he's in my top three, you know, as far as just watching football players in this year's class. I love that guy. When you watch his highlights, when you're showing him the other night in the snow, I mean, come on. I mean, how do, how do you not love a guy who's playing all his highlights in the, in the you know, 20, 20 inches of snow and whatnot? Unbelievable physical ability with Burnham as well. And then uh, my favorite, I know, I know uh, you and I talked a week ago, is I'm a huge fan of Tui Alamaka, just his, you know, his physical prowess that he brings. Yeah, good stuff. Linebacker group certainly can't argue that. I mean, you bring in Marcus Freeman as defensive coordinator, and now, of course, head coach, you would expect for him to recruit that position at a very high level. Um, sleeper of the class, Tim, who do you think that maybe the, the recruiting websites or college coaches just, you know, weren't high enough on? My pick is is Morrison, is Morrison at DB. I know he's a four-star, but he's not a 250, so he's at the low end, the tail end. Um, I loved his film. I think he's just one of those hidden guys, he's kind of a forgotten guy in this class because so much has been made, obviously, of the linebackers, you know, the offensive line recruits that they've gotten, the non-recruits at wide receiver that, you know, they lost out on at the end. But you watch his film, outstanding. Uh, it's just his squareness right there, his ability to strike. He's got a couple plays on his highlight film where he's just going to come flat out and knock you. I know you went and watched him live, and you had some great video on him. What, what we're watching right now. That, yeah, that's what we're watching now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, outstanding film you know, with that wide receiver, that you know, the national wide receiver that uh, Notre Dame's recruiting like crazy. And then kind of the, the, the hidden thing with Morrison is people forget, I mean, he's – I mean, his five trips now, he went to the two top DB producing schools in the Pac-12 in Oregon and Washington that produced a lot of DBs in the uh, NFL. And then you got Alabama Auburn he tripped to. On top of that, he got an offer from, you know, basically DBU in the NFL, which is LSU. And then Notre Dame was able to get him. He comes from a nationally ranked program, a big time Catholic powerhouse in Brophy Prep. And I just think they're getting a hidden gem that's kind of being, been just lost in the shuffle. Mm. All right, moving along here, Tim. Um, Notre Dame just signing one receiver in the 2022 class. And again, that could change. I personally think they're going to take another uh, wide receiver, whether that be a, a graduate transfer or um, a high school recruit. We'll have more to report at that at bloomandgold.com. But what do you kind of make of them only signing one receiver? And can you also touch on the talent of Tobias Merriweather? Well, his talent is is right there. I mean, we, I mean, when he committed, you're just like instant the height, which we talked about way back when with him and his length. You know that that he provides. He's those tall type of players that excelled during the Brian Kelly era. You know, you could there's a half a dozen of them that have played, and he's he's that same type of body. He's got great burst, great quickness. Look at his little cutting ability right there. He's going to be a guy with the depth and the numbers issues that, hey, you know, he better be ready to come in and play you know, right from day one because they're going to need him. So, you know, the wide receiver issues were obviously the two they lost has been talked about a million times over. You know, they were looking to leave and follow the visits, as you like to say. I always thought it was interesting. You know, Walker visited all the way up till he signed. And I know you talked about, you know, C.J. Williams only tripped South Bend one time. So that was a, a little telltale there in his recruiting. So they only got one. They got an outstanding football player who could play on day one. You mix that in with the three really good freshmen that they signed last year that played this year. So you got four over the last two years. And like you're saying, it's going to be a big, big need here in 2023 for uh, Marcus Freeman and Tommy Reese to go out. And obviously you've talked a ton about the – the numbers and the, and the high impact guys that they're going after. So, you know, it is a little disappointing, but what's Notre Dame known for tight end. You Notre Dame's got a lot of tight ends. Don't be surprised. This is my opinion coming from a coach is 
don't be surprised if Michael Mayer is flexed out playing slot more than ever. Yeah. You know, they could have an inline tight end. They got more enough of those guys and see Mayer do more of the Tyler Eifert type of thing. And even what the Georgia tight end did, the Georgia tight end rarely played in a three point stance. Bowers. So I want to be surprised. Yeah. Bowers with Georgia. I wouldn't be surprised if Mayer did that. When you watch his film this year, he is flexed out a lot. But now I think he's going to be like, hey, you're going out there. We're going to throw you the ball 75 times. Have fun covering him, people. And uh, I think that's what they're going to do to to mix and match for some of the wide receiver numbers that they don't have a lot of. Yeah, Notre Dame will play anywhere from two to four receivers in a, in a given play. Uh, tight end, you know, one to two, sometimes three. And uh, Notre Dame almost has as many tight ends on scholarship than as they do receivers, assuming they bring everyone back, which, I mean, Notre Dame looks to want to bring back Avery Davis, Kevin Austin, Braden Lindsay, Wilkins, all these upperclassmen. Um, so, yeah, whether it's Mayer, George Takis, Mitchell Evans, Kane Barong, who I would um, say is more of a receiving tight end, you could see all those guys um, being split out and, you know, kind of help out the receiver depth there. So good stuff there from Tim Hyde, uh, bloomandgold.com. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up on this video, and we will catch you guys next time.